To solve this lab, you need to gain access to the admin page and delete the user Carlos using a CLTE request smuggling vulnerability. But there's a bit of a twist because we need to trick the backend into thinking that our request is coming from the local host. And normally we can use the X forwarded four header for that, but the application is using a different variation of that header name. So in order to achieve our goal, we'll get the application to leak that header name to us first and then use it to solve the lab. Let's get started. We're on the homepage of the lab here. And if we try to just go to the slash admin page, we get an error saying that we either need to be logged in as the administrator, which we don't have credentials for that account, or we need to backend to think that the request is coming from 127.001, the local host. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the get slash admin request here and send it to repeater, switch to repeater. And we're going to start by just adding a X forwarded four header for a value of 127.001 and send it but we still get 401 unauthorized. And this is because the front end is overriding the X forwarded four header before it gets to the back end. But we can work around this by smuggling in our request to the back end so that the front end doesn't override it. So let's figure out what kind of vulnerability we're dealing with by using a timing technique. So I'm gonna to go to proxy and it should be history and get the get slash request for the root here and send it to repeater, switch to repeater. And we want to prepare this for request smuggling. So I'm going to go to the right side here under request attributes and downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. I'm also changing the request method to post and I'm going to delete the unnecessary headers. So anything up from content type and underneath the host header. I'm also going to turn off update content length automatically. We want to control that ourselves for request smuggling. And uh, I'm also going to show non-printable characters. It's handy to see the new lines uh, on the screen as well. Next thing we do is I'm adding the transfer encoding chunk header. And then we're going to use our timing technique. So we're sending a chunk of size three, ABC, followed by the letter X, which is the next chunk size, but this is an invalid one. And I'm also going to update the content length to six. And if we send this request and we get a timeout in our response, that's a very strong indication that this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE vulnerability. And we see it's already taken a long time to get back and we get the timeout here. So now we have to confirm the CLTE vulnerability using a differential response. And we need two types of requests for that. We need an attack request, which will be this request right here. So I'm gonna rename this tab to attack request. I'm gonna send a copy of it to repeater and this will become our normal request. There we go. And I'm going to delete our um, timing technique here because we don't need that. I'm just instead going to add uh, fake data. So uh, request body parameter foo for a value of bar. I'm just going to send that just to make sure that we get back a 200 okay for our normal request. And we do. And I'm going to go back to our attack request. And we want to delete the timing technique that we had here in the body before. And instead we want to send a terminating chunk because we want to make sure that the backend thinks that the request has ended here. And then underneath, we want to do a get request for something that doesn't exist. So I'm just going to request some gibberish here. We want to use HTTP 1.1 followed by a new line. Um, we also want to set a content length and a content type because we want at least one byte of the normal request to be appended to our attack request after uh, we send the normal request. So I'm going to paste that here. I'm going to set a request body parameter X for a value of none. And this is where our normal request will be appended after. The content length we have to set is the actual content length we have here in our smuggled request body, which is one, two bytes plus one, because we want at least one byte from the normal request to be appended to it. So I'm going to set this to three. And then before we send the request, we also want to make sure that update content length automatically is turned on again. Because this is a CLTE lab, we want to make sure that the front end forwards the entire request to the back end. And we don't want to fiddle with the content length uh, constantly while we're making changes to our payload here. So we'll just turn that on. And we're going to send this request. We get back a 200 OK. And then send our normal request. And we get a 404 not found. So this true using the differential response here with using an attack request and a normal request, we've confirmed the CLTE vulnerability. So let's go back to our attack request now. And then instead of requesting the gibberish here, we're going to request the admin page. And I'm also going to add a X forwarded four header. Forwarded four for a value of 127.001 and send it. And we get back a 200 OK and go to our normal request and send it as well. 
but we still get a 401 unauthorized. If I render the page, you can see that here. And this is an indication that the application is using a different header name than X forwarded for to perform the source IP verification. So let's try and get the application to leak what that exact header name is by using request smuggling. So I'm going to go to the home page again, and we see that there's a search the blog functionality here. I'm just going to enter a term foobar and search and go back to burp and then go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the post slash request here where we have our search term for foobar at the bottom. If I search for foobar in the response, you can see that it's nicely reflected in the response. And we can use this behavior to have the application leak the exact X4 bit 4 header that it's using. So I'm going to go back to repeater and create a second copy of our attack request here by sending it to repeater. And instead of the get slash admin request here, we want to make it a post request for the slash endpoint, the root endpoint, because this is where the endpoint of the search functionality is located. I'm going to delete the X forwarded four header and leave the content length in place for now. And for the request body parameter, remember we want search equals foobar is what we had before. And then for the content length, it's a bit tricky. So when we send our attack request and we follow it up with our normal request, we want to make sure that we see as much as possible of that normal request in the response uh, that the application sends back. Because if you go to our normal request, the front end is actually going to inject their version of the X forwarded four header in here. And we want to make sure that we can see that reflected in the response to our normal uh, request. So if I select the text here and I go to selection, you can see 159 is the content length that we have here. So I'm going to use that as a minimum for our second attack request here, just to make sure that we see as much as possible. If we don't get to see the header we want, we might have to increase this. Um, you don't want to set this too high because if you exceed uh, the total length of our request here, plus the total length of our normal request, then you'll get a timeout. So let's start with this and see how it goes. So I'm going to send this. We get back at 200. Okay. And then follow it up with our normal request. And you can already see that it's being reflected here and we can see the header here, but let's go to pretty. I'm going to search for foobar and then we can see the version uh, of the X forwarded four header that the application is using is uh, this value right here. So I'm going to copy that and then go back to our first attack request for the get slash admin page. And instead of X forwarded four, I'm going to paste the header value that we found. And then I'm going to send our attack request again. We get back at 200. Okay. Go to our normal request and send it. And now if I go to render, you can see that we have access to the admin page. So I'm going to go to pretty and go to the user Carlos here and uh, copy the delete link for Carlos and go back to our attack request. And instead of get slash admin, just going to paste that here and then send this request and follow it up with the normal request. And we got back a 302 found indicating that the delete action was successful. And if I switch back to the lab, you can see congratulations, you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.